What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, the opportunity has struck. You can feel people having some sort of sigh. Um, although this strike is very inconvenient for the participants that are involved depending on how long this goes. But for some people who are supposed to put things out or start doing something and they're seeing the numbers now, Brian, they're seeing what's working and what's not working. Are we gonna continue doing this or should we go a different route? This is the opportunity that the strike has given. We thought it was just gonna be the writer strike. Now the actor strike, this is going to a whole nother level, Brian. With it's people saying, issue. Issue. yeah, 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 yeah. With people saying things that are getting them in trouble for saying it. I mean, Bob Iger of all people. Yeah. No better. And like that, that probably, that probably extended the timeline for this by at least a few months, just the way that went over. Could you let us know what's going on um, with this strike? I have not been really keeping in touch with what's been going on as of late, uh, but you could, could you uh, give us some news as to what's currently happening and what do you think will happen next i mean basically you can boil this down to two main you can boil this down to two to three main issues um and several of them to me at least seem like the kind of things that take a long time to really sort out because there's not a lot of great data around so number one is how to compensate talent based upon their work in streaming properties when you cannot truly measure how popular or unpopular a streaming project is. There is no equivalent of box office. The metrics that we have are put out by the streamers themselves, the ultimate biased other side of the table. And so there is legitimate concern that if, you know, if you're the writer of a show that blows up and goes super viral, like a Wednesday, for example. There's a world where you're not paid any different than a show that just goes on to Netflix and is never seen. Yeah. Because there's no percentage participation that you can agree on. So that's like number one. And for talent, again, it's like, to me, it feels like the, the thing that has to be agreed on is what is the equivalent of a Nielsen rating? What is the equivalent of a third party audience measurement for all of these projects. The streamers don't really want that to be public. They, I mean, these are publicly traded companies. I don't know if they would really want people to know how much is truly being watched because there's like an ad component to that, right? They're now all selling ads into these services. Well, the advertisers find out that like, that you said X amount of minutes are being watched, but in reality, that's only X, a, a lot fewer people. They're probably paying less for those ads, right? So like, there's a lot of dominoes here. It just seems very complex. But at the same time, it's like if you're the writers and the actors, you probably only get one bite at this apple realistically um, for the next 10, 15 years. So, yeah, you're going to stand as long as you can um, on that point. So that's number one. Again, I don't that, that seems tough to resolve. Number two is AI. Right. So like AI, which has swept the world and swept markets in, in all sorts of forms, is no different here. Um, you know, interestingly, I think the thing that that secret invasion will might actually be most remembered for is the fact that the opening credit sequence is AI and people lost their minds that Disney was okay doing that because everyone saw everyone in the talent world, the artists, the writers saw the apocalypse in those credits that I can be replaced. Like what are the rights to my digital likeness? Can I be replaced entirely? Can I be disintermediated? And like, could a studio basically make a project that has, you know, prime actors from years gone by for free because they're the ones who own their image from when they were originally those guys? Like, there's all sorts of questions legally that have never been traversed or even discussed until probably 12 months ago. And now they're trying to write contractual rules and compensation for this idea again. That does not seem like something that's like, hey, offer, counter offer, we sign. That feels like months and months of fear on both sides of the table about what is the right way to have ownership of 
digital likeness, uh, digital content. Like, you know, if you go to chat GPT and say, make me an Aaron Sorkin script for a Marvel show. Should Aaron Sorkin be compensated for that? Probably. But like right now you can probably do that today if you wanted. Like, and like, yeah. so it's things like that, that, that to me feel like this is going to go well into next year. Um, before we get some kind of resolution, it'll go until the pain of not having the work is so acute that people need to start making real concessions. And that's on both sides of the table. Studio, you know, studios have a pipeline. They still have product. We can talk about the calendar, which doesn't look that great for our genre, quite honestly. Yeah. But everyone needs to eat at some point. So I think until we get to that point, you're going to have a lot of posturing. And stuff like the Iger interview at Sun Valley on CNBC, you can find it anywhere. That's just like throwing matches onto the fire and into the into the gas can right now. Like you don't need that type of stuff because it just makes people dig in, right? Yeah. That, the Iger speech begets the Brian Cranston rant about we will not be replaced by robots, right? Like that's what happened. That's the mode we're in right now. And so, yeah. yeah, I think we're a long ways away from this getting resolved. But the longer it goes, Pablo, is there a silver lining? For our troubled superhero genre, I mean, the hope, man, is they is that they can just they would have to start all over again because by that time, man, these guys will probably be not a not interested. They're gonna price themselves out, and they don't look the same. They've gone on to do other things. See Mulu. Forget it. He's going to be a singer. He's not going to come back for Shang-Chi, too. He, he's, 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 he's Ken. He's, yeah. He's he, <laughs> they're done, he's man. Had, he's had Knuff of, of uh, Shang-Chi. <laughs> he, he'll be, he'll, I'm telling you, he'll rather, he'd rather be Street Fighter. If you give him Ryu, he'll probably do that. But he ain't going to do MCU stuff, Marvel stuff. Because ain't nobody feeling what Marvel's doing right now. Marvel just needs to start all over again. I think what I want to see is, do they have the courage to start canceling more of the timeline? Because that would me that would be the signal to me. We heard about there were these two cancellations of things that were never announced. The, you're, the longer this goes, why can't they use that as air cover? To kind of say like, hey, you know, like we never. This is the. This is like the, the force majeure, the seismic event nobody saw coming. It's forced us to basically just reconstitute all of this, and like, you know what? We've thought about it in the two, three years we've now had to kind of get things back up and running, and it's like, mutants. We're gonna relaunch with mutants. That's gonna be the storytelling we want to focus on. And by the time we come back around to Avengers and all that sort of stuff, you will have forgotten about the trials and tribulations mm. of the multiverse. Why not? What, no, yeah. who, who would be so angry at that? No one. That they wouldn't forgive Disney for I mean, not no one, but people, you know people how uh, they are. They'll, they'll, they'll get upset like, oh, I wanted to, whatever, man. Yeah, this like, is not working. Yeah, but it's like, Compare your anger to them canceling the rest of the multiverse saga to them continuing on the path they're on and cranking out what will likely seemingly going to be a poor Kang Dynasty and a lackluster. You're going to be 10 times more angry if that happens than if you don't get them at all. I promise you. Brian, I'm already not interested in seeing Galact the Galactus movie and Fantastic Four because we've already seen it. It's like they just wanted to they want to do a redo of what was done before. Like, when are we going to get Doom? I don't want to see Doom when he... I want to see Doom interact with T'Challa. I want to see Doom interact with Captain America and some of these other characters. What is he going to be Fantastic Four's only foe? It's like if the people in there are not familiar with comic books, Brian, you do not belong in there. I'm sorry. Unless you've done your homework. Well, that's it. I think they've. I think for some reason they they they've definitely lost their feel for what to translate to screen and what not to. They had such a good <clears throat> hit rate, you know, early on of like choosing a title, you know, Winter Soldier, Civil War, uh, even Infinity, the Infinity Saga, like. 
we didn't love every choice they made. I think you and I were both disappointed we never got an Adam Warlock sort of coordinated effort as part of the fight against Thanos. But I don't think either of us is sitting here being like, man, that that just ruined Infinity War and <laughs> Endgame. Like, we got this, we got things that were true to the essence of, yes. of that story. Yes. And they wiped out and edited things that clearly they felt were not not appropriate to come to screen. But lately it's felt like the stuff that's making the screen is the stuff that's like not appropriate and the stuff that like almost seems like a layup yeah. is getting left in the cutting room floor and you're kind of like I don't I don't know who's making, you know, who's making these decisions or what they're seeing or thinking that like audiences are going to respond to but the hit rate's going way down. And so I'm like this is this is like a you could argue this is a godsend to the to the creator. It's a gift. To yes, to reassess what they're doing with no pressure to put out any new product because they legally can't yeah. while the strikes are going on. Yeah. This is the perfect opportunity. I think going down this a path is certainly not the way to go, man. But who the other thing that's helping is like the movies that are in pipeline, which are still going to come out. You're getting a chance to see what audiences are responding to and not responding to. Like the Barbie, the Barbie Oppenheimer phenomenon. Like, yeah, there's something unique about it. Like I wouldn't just count on that happening over and over again. Mm -hmm. but that's not to say you can't learn anything from it either. Like there are lessons in there. There's a lesson of people crave originality. It's like, if you're going to do IP, that's great, but you can't be lazy about it. You can't just rehash stuff that people can predict without even having yeah. of a trailer. Like there's something to going to the movies and saying like, whether you love Barbie or you didn't like it or what, it was different. Like when it went up on screen and you, I mean, I don't care what you say about the movie. It's like Barbie land to me is impressive. The fact that they went and built that the way it looks how, how detailed it was in terms of its accuracy to the toys that you played with or that your friends played with or that your sister played with. That's really good storytelling because that looks tight and it fits the story they want to tell. And then, yeah, sure, you make of that what you want. I found it personally pretty entertaining, but, you know, and it's like, I'm a guy. It's like, I don't go to a Barbie movie to be like lifted up. Like, I know I'm going to be the butt of the joke in the movie. I'm, I'm okay. I know that going in. I'm fine with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But I'm just saying, and then Oppenheimer, other end of the spectrum, very serious. But Nolan's mind in terms of the way he shoots, like he uses colors, like black and white, like the way that's structured, it's like, and he's shot on IMAX 70 millimeter camera. So it looks incredible. You're just like, He's giving you the reason to go. And it's like, in between, it's like we're complaining about how sloppy some of these other things look, how cheap they look despite a $200 million budget. Like, use this time to fix. That's fixable. Yeah. Use this time to learn from those projects and, and adapt. I just would love to be in that room when they're talking about ideas, man. I'll probably, they'll probably throw me out. <laughs> That's probably right. That's probably right. But I mean, I think, and I think the other thing too, from a DC perspective, I think it's helpful in the standpoint of, look, clearly the last remnants of what they had, no one wants to see, right? The way Flash was treated at the box office, you know, they're trying to promote Blue Beetle as a, a part of the new universe, but clearly people are viewing it as part of the old universe because nobody's interested in seeing it. The box office tracking is terrible. Aquaman 2, I mean, there's zero buzz for that movie. That's good. The strike probably helps them a little bit in the sense that they can use that as an excuse for why none of these projects are going to perform and kind of say like, well, that's all old stuff. We had to get it out the door and the strike killed whatever hopes those projects had. And now, you know, Superman legacy, we're on to the, the stuff you really should care about. But all that stuff is questionable, man. But if they don't use this time wisely. <laughs> and what would, what, time, what would using this time wisely look like to you? Yeah, like I said, I think I the number one thing is, is canceling things that are marginal. Blade ain't making it. Do not make Blade if it's not ready. It's not going to be made. 
like do not make armor wars if it makes no sense like you know get rid of you know if you're if you're sony i think you know get rid of more of those projects if you don't think that you really can stick the landing like it's like yo y'all talked about for years doing this cosmic thing y'all haven't even scratched the surface you had the ability to go cosmic and just take us off world. You've kept us here. And I mean, yeah, you tried quantum and it was a disaster, yo. It's like, yo, really? And 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 what was that? Uh Thor, Love and Thunder. A little certain things were really good, Brian. But I mean, that's what I mean. So you can use this time to rethink. Your approach to VFX, your your how how the aesthetic looks on screen. If you're going to stay in space, like you, you clearly have to redesign that. It's not working. Um, I think the other thing you could do is for the projects you are going to move forward with, you have the luxury now of disconnecting them a little bit more if you want. Like, why why is anyone going to be mad if like your Fantastic Four movie is is more standalone? Like, and because you haven't been able to make and release these other things that you thought you were going to be, no one's going to have a problem with that. If it's a good movie. <laughs> No one's going to have a problem with that. No one's going to have a problem with it, Brian, but the problem will be that where are these other guys? That's what that's what the problem is. Where are these other guys if they're in this world and in this universe? How do you explain it? Where's Gaia? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, here comes Gaia against Galactus. <laughs> <laughs> is she going to be like, oh, my God, yo. The, I don't want this. Oh. <laughs> That's what I mean by you'd be better off disconnecting a little bit, Make, making people forget about choices like that. Because yeah, it's, it's it's there, and it's like you know you just can't help. Even though whatever Carters of the Galaxy Three was great, you didn't ask about who was who, and that was his own self-contained thing. Because why? Cosmic, right? Yeah, and because J and because I think like it was it was an ending of sorts. Yes, and so James Gunn got permission basically based on his track record to not connect it as much as yeah. other things. And that was very refreshing. And the box yeah. reflected. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know, Brian. It's why Superman uh, probably has it's probably why you can be more optimistic about Superman. Now when we talk about Superman, they're they they're they're seemingly trying to set up a whole bunch of connections and I'm a little bit nervous about some of that stuff. But like because Superman is not bound by 10 other projects that came before it it has the luxury of that being that new chapter one it, it i think that will be liberating um for the for the story and and what we see i'm hopeful yeah yeah we definitely have to talk about that in some of the some of the rumors or the castings that we've heard are, um although to me they're very interesting and they could lead to other things certainly um but i think there's a uh i think a bright side to this uh that we can certainly dis this uh discuss because i know your 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 con what your concerns could be for, about this uh, as they are for me but i'm look i'm choosing i'm choosing to stick in there with gun because he knows about this right you was he, he, I'm, I'm just choosing to, 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 to stick with him because y'all already know this don't work out one hundred billion dollars. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below. Is this the opportunity for the MCU or Disney, period, to look at what they got coming that haven't started production on yet that they say that they're going to come out and do they really need to do these because you can't do nothing now and by the time you do get to do them does it look the same meaning do you see it being successful based on what's been happening thus far because you've been putting us you've been giving us some straight up garbage See, people, we don't only, you know, get on the rock for giving us garbage. We, no, you, no, the MCU no, gives no. us garbage. That's the thing. Kevin, we're always careful to say we are actually fans of the rock. Like, yeah, despite, despite his to his choices in Hollywood, especially recently. But no, this is not about bashing the rock and holding up everyone else. Like, 
Secret Invasion was an insulting exercise to me. Like, up, like I would say, like it had been heading in that direction, but like there have been points where even when we talked about Eternals, I was like, well, I think there's a good movie in there, but they lost it in editing. Like that feels light years better than what Secret <laughs> Secret Invasion was an atrocity. <laughs> that was a disgrace start to finish there is nothing redeeming about that show there's no way to save that's what i'm saying like that felt lazy it felt mailed in yeah. and it felt like we can slap the name secret invasion on it show you sam jackson's picture and you know people are going to subscribe right, yeah. and, watch. and that's terrible it's, it's saddening that's what it is right it's saddening that this era is uh disappearing right in front of our eyes into a, 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 don't you get feelings of the 80s with Captain America in that motorcycle, that rubber suit? Don't you get you get that feeling of garbage? You know, oh, it's like I was trying to I was trying to think like was was the fight between Gaia and Gravik was that quest for peace? Was that Superman and Nuclear Man? <laughs> was that the, was that the 2023 equivalent? You could certainly throw it up there if it was a top ten list. Definitely. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gem Report. Show goes on!